Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video we're going to talk about fallout shelters. But before that, I want to let you know that tonight at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, the next episode in the Alien Invasion series is going to be released here on this channel, so you've been watching that series. Pop back here at 8.30, you can see the next episode. But yes, in this video we're unfortunately talking about fallout shelters. Now if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you might recognize this space as my root cellar. I recently built a new home and one of the things that we added to it was a root cellar. Also, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might be aware that when I was building this root cellar, I built some features into it that could make it work as a fallout shelter. It's not an absolutely perfect fallout shelter. As a matter of fact, it's 38 degrees in here right now. So it's not like, oh, it's such a nice, warm, cozy place. I could totally hang out here for, you know, the, the uh, last out the apocalypse. You know, there are a lot of things that I'm going to have to change if I need to use this as a fallout shelter. But honestly, I didn't want to put in the investment of money to just build a fallout shelter and not be able to use it if there's never a nuclear holocaust because hopefully there never will be uh, and I wanted to get some use out of the structure and it's been working really great as a root cellar as you can see we've got all sorts of food and produce on here like I said 38 degrees is perfect refrigerator temperature there's squash and apples and potatoes and onions and all sorts of things it's been working out really great for us um, but you know we may have to use it for its other possible purpose now like I said I didn't make it perfect for a, uh, a fallout shelter I'm going to be doing some uh, some new things, some modifications. Honest to God, I was kind of hoping to do those things during the summer. I, I thought the world would at least give me until the summer to, to start talking about annihilating itself with nuclear bombs. You know, obviously I've kind of moved up those plans. And I want to talk with you about some of the things that I'm planning to do to uh, you know, retrofit this, play, this space to get it functional. I know a lot of, of you guys probably don't have something like this. I think this is pretty extreme. This is pretty cool that I was able to do this, but I know not everyone has, you know, has something like this, but you don't need something specifically like this. The idea of a fallout shelter is it's just a bunch of stuff, heavy stuff, the heavier the better, heavy stuff between you and the radiation. That's what a fallout shelter is. You want a, just a bunch of stuff. It can be, you know, rock or concrete or lead or rock or dirt or toys or you know, piles of uh, firewood. It can be anything, but the heavier the better. And the, the more dense the stuff, the less of it you need. Uh, the idea uh, with um, creating this protection is, uh, you know, usually the scientific community describes it as having... Um, uh, having thicknesses. So, uh, it, and that refers to the amount of thickness of something that it takes to uh, cut the ra radiation passing through it by half. Now, lead, you need very little. Uh, concrete, you need a little more. Dirt, you need a little more. Water, you need a little more. In fact, water is a pretty good, uh, a pretty good block. And one of the things I'm planning on doing is using these, I think they're five gallon uh, jugs, they're stackable. I'm planning on using these as, uh, you know, another layer of protection and also I'll be having water stored in them. So if I, I need water, if some of my other water systems go down, I'll be able to have water in there. So I'm going to talk uh, kind of loosely in this video just about some of the things I'm doing. I, I'm just uh, recording this video this week for you guys. You know, this isn't something I think any of us have been really planning, but I've got a list here of things that I'm planning on doing. I wanted to share them with you. They might give you some ideas about things that you might want to do for yourself. So what I'm starting with is essentially a concrete box. It's got 10 inches of concrete on the sides, eight inches of concrete on the ceiling. There's some of this metal here too, which you know that, that, that offers some protection. There's dirt on top of the concrete up there. Uh, it's probably only, it's probably only about a foot of dirt on top. Uh, the people that were installing it were a little bit nervous about how much dirt we could put on the top here. Now that the concrete here has cured a lot, I feel like I can start adding some more dirt on top of that. Um, but that's what I'm dealing with. I've got a concrete box and uh, you know, I'm going to be adding on top of that. If you were to put something together, you can do it with cinder blocks and dirt or you know, whatever. The idea is get a lot of stuff between you and the radiation. So here are some of the things that I'm working on. As you can see, one thing that I do have in here already is lighting. I have elect uh, electric lighting that I ran into this space and uh, you know, I think that's kind of important. Uh, without the electric lighting, all I have are these uh, little light tubes. Here's one of them right here. Uh, there's light tubes on the side. The light tubes give you enough a light to kind of see by, especially after your eyes have adjusted, but it's not much and it's really nice to be able to have the actual electric lights in here. At the moment, these lights are being run off the power grid. Uh, as of tomorrow, I think I'm going to be able to finish up the solar power system on my house. I've got 6,000 uh, watts of solar panels on the roof and batteries and everything in the house is going to be a uh, off-grid system. It's going to be completely uh, separate from the grid. So uh, as of tomorrow, these lights should run off of the uh, 
the uh, solar backup that is on the house. Uh, I'm not going to stop there though. I, I want to have another backup. And, uh, you know, because that's one of the things is if something happens while you're in this kind of space, you don't want to leave. Uh, you know, there's some uh, discussion as to how long you really want to stay in a, a fallout shelter. Really, you want to stay in there as long as you can, up to two weeks or so. Uh, the, the worst part of the situation is going to be initially, like, certainly the first few hours uh, and, you know, the first several days. You really want to be protected more during the, that time than you know later on, and the reason for that is that the majority of the radiation gets released at the at the beginning, and that's for a very simple reason. What radiation is is it is energy that is is being flung off of atoms as they degrade uh, to lower forms, and at the beginning, uh, you know, right after a nuclear event, the those atoms are really degrading super quickly. They're throwing off a lot of energy. Uh, you know, with every degradation, they're throwing off you know energy at every stage. And because they're degrading so quickly, you know, with every degra uh, degradation, there's more energy, more energy, more energy th being thrown off. So right at the beginning, when they're degrading quickly, they are throwing off a lot of, a lot of energy. But the side effect of that, the, you know, the, the rosy side, is that they're degrading very quickly. So that stage at the beginning where there's an enormous amount of uh, you know, ambient radiation in the area, that only lasts for a you know, matter of hours or days. Obviously, the longer you can stay separated from that, the better. But you know, minimally, if you can have a environment where you can be protected from it for a couple of days, you know, that's going to be much better than just being out in the open, having your body be bombarded by all of that. So, uh, so one of the things I wanted to have in this space was lighting and electricity. Uh, like I said, this is run off the grid right now. It's going to be as of tomorrow, I'll be running off of solar panels on the roof, but I, I have some other solar panels. I have 700 watts of solar panels. I'm going to do a backup system. Uh, so I've a redundant system of solar panels so that if anything happened with the bigger system because it's new I don't have that much familiarity with it I you know I can't go over there you know into the house where all that stuff is and you know tweak it or work on it I want to have another backup system a smaller one in here where I'll have the batteries in here the charge controllers will be in here the inverters will be in here and I, I can have that as a backup if the other one fails so that's one thing I, I plan on doing uh, another thing that the electricity will be used for, useful for is and it has something to do with why I'm having uh, trouble uh, articulating words is uh, creating heat. It's pretty cold in here. Like I said, it was like 39, you know, 38 degrees, something like that. It's pretty cold. It works really great as a root cellar, but if we needed to use this as a fallout shelter, we're not going to want to be in here with it being 38 degrees all the time. And one of the reasons I'm kind of chilly too is that I'm wearing shorts in here because I'm from New England and that's the way we swing. But um, you know, I do want to be able to warm this place up and electricity uh, would allow me to run a space heater. Now I would absolutely love to have like a nice cozy wood stove in here. Wood stoves, that's my thing. Uh, but the downside of wood stoves are that you uh, you know you need a bunch of firewood, you need a chimney going out. It just it, the whole thing wouldn't work. You need to be bringing air into it, and the air would be like contaminated with radiation. It would be a horrible scene. So yeah, having some kind of an electric heater is kind of really the only way that you could do it, other unless you did some kind of geothermal system or you know solar hot water or something like that would be fine. But combustion is not something you really want to be messing with. So. Having electricity, you could run some kind of a, you know, a small space heater uh, it, to, you know, to warm up your space. So, so if you are in a place that's cold, you might want to consider that. The other thing that's really important is the ability to breathe. Uh, that's an important thing for human beings. And uh, that is something that uh, is built into the structure here. Now behind this big pile of junk over in the corner, right, which is actually the backup system solar panels that I gotta go outside pretty soon. Um, there is an uh, air intake vent down the corner there, and it goes to outside over here. And it's a four inch vent. I'm going to be putting a four inch uh, fan on it, and it's going to draw air in from the outside. Now, that might sound uh, incredibly stupid because why would you like, try to hide in a hole and then you bring the horror of outside down? you know, down to you. Well, yeah, that would be a terrible idea if you didn't filter the air. You have to filter the air. Um, and the way you have to filter the air is you have to have the filters separated from your environment, which means filter filtration happens outside. Now, um, the downside of that is that, like, what if the filters get clogged? You know, you, you can't be messing with the filters if they're outside unless you're going to walk outside and expose yourself to all that. Uh, you might think that, well, the solution to that is you just put the filters in here so you can deal with them, but that would that wouldn't be a good idea either because then you get back to that bring the horrors of outside in there because then you got a filter that's packed with radio radioactive material and it's emanating out into your space and then if you take the thing off it you know can't do it that way they have to be the filters have to be separated from you because the filters become 
radioactive and dangerous. So my filter is going to be outside and I'm going to be building kind of a, a shroud around the air intake where I'm going to have multiple filters. I'm going to use HEPA filters, the kind you just use for, you know, uh, common indoor uh, air filtration, the kinds that are like good down to like virus size kind of chunks. I know it's not technically like an individual virus, but the really good HEPA filters because you want to be filtering out any fine particles that are in the air before they come in because you don't want to be welcoming that, uh, that stuff in. And I want to have a lot of filters on there so that the individual draw on any one filter is lower. If you only have one filter, all the air goes through that and it's going to clog up faster. And if it clogs up after just a couple days, you know, it could be really dusty outside. Who knows what the situation is going to be. If it clogs up after just a few days, someone's got to go out there and deal with that. Otherwise, everyone's going to asphyxiate and die. And whoever, you know, I guess you, you draw straws for that because whoever goes out, is going to be increasing their risk of cancer or even immediate de death depending on you know when they decide to go outside so that's something very important you want to have uh, ability to warm the space keep it comfortable you want to have the ability to breathe in there you also have want to have water there are a couple different ways that we are planning on having water access in here one is right back over here uh, in the, the same tube that I used to bring electricity in, I also have this blue hose right here. That's a water hose, it comes from the house, and as long as the house keeps its electricity from those 6,000 watts of solar panels, I should be able to you know, keep that water pressurized in here. It just comes in as a hose right there. I plan on adding some, uh, you know, a little bit of kind of like PEX plumbing or something like that and bring it to a bit of a sink. <laughs> You know, you don't want to just open up a garden hose inside and it's going to like spray everywhere. So, uh, you know, have some kind of a, create some kind of a sink basin and, uh, you know, some sort of a faucet so you can get, you know, uh, water out of there. Uh, that brings up the uh, idea of, you know, once you bring water in, you're not going to drink all of it. You know, some of it's going to go down the sink as waste if you have to wash up or anything like that, you know, for basic hygiene, uh, hygiene and sanitation. So you have to be able to get liquid out of your space. Uh, the best way to do that is to have some kind of plumbing. Uh, now, there's two different types of plumbing. One is for solid stuff, if you know what I mean, number two, and the other one is for number one. Number one and, you know, uh, wastewater, that's a lot easier. That can just go through like a small plumbing tube and, you know, you can run it out somewhere. And if you absolutely have to, you, you know, if it gets a clog or something like that, you can, you can blow through it and, you know, try to clear, clear the clog as long as there's no, like, solids going through there. Obviously, you know, the other type of plumbing waste that we are all familiar with, that's a whole different story. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. But you need to get some way of getting wastewater or, you know, urine out of you know, your environment. So you have to think about that. We have a little uh, foot drain uh, that um, was made in, uh, into the lower wall of the structure. And what I plan on doing is just having a small drain that goes out through there. And then uh, there's a perimeter drain around the entire uh, structure here is a way of keeping uh, uh, water from accumulating. It keeps the structure more dry and I think I'm going to kind of tap into that and use that as kind of a waste water line if I ever need to use it. All right. So those are kind of the basic things. You want water, you want ability to you know not uh, freeze to death, you want to be able to breathe, and you want to be able to you know have some lighting and, and the sea. Uh, some other things that are important. I'm just going to go down this list. So they get a little bit down and dirty because you know None of us were planning on doing that, uh, all this this month, but uh, you know, here we are. Uh, another thing I'm planning on getting is some way of getting information in here. So you have some sense of what's going on in the world. You know, maybe false alarm, <laughs> you, know, you, you, you didn't need to go in in the first place. You know, we can all come out. Wouldn't you love to know that as opposed to like waiting two weeks and then finding out you didn't have to be in there. A couple different ways we have of doing that. One comes right through here. This is a coaxial cable and this runs into the house and it, it has the ability to be swapped over in the house so that we can run uh, internet into here. So we can have some internet communications. Now, uh, I, know, I, know, I know the tone of people who watch prepping channels. The first thing people are going to say is like, well, the internet would be down. Probably. You know, yeah, probably. You know, power would go down. You know, uh, you know, all, all that kind of infrastructure probably would go down. But it's so easy to just run a, a cable in here and have a router in here it, that on the off chance that it's not, or like maybe at the beginning it's not functioning, but then it you know, comes up, you know, why not, why not throw that in there? So that, that's one way of getting uh, some information in here. The other way, which is probably more reliable, is uh, having an antenna and running some radio in here. And that's something I'm going to be working on over the next you know, several days or weeks or whatever, you know, hopefully 
you know, people can, you know, stave this off at least a little bit for us, um, is uh, to ha have a radio antenna so that you can get radio signals in here. That would be a much more reliable way if, of getting information. If you just have a radio in here, it ain't going to get any signals in here because, you know, it's all blocked off. Maybe with whatever you might be using as a fallout shelter, uh, fallout shelter it might be different. But the whole idea of having mass around uh, it to keep... Um, uh, energy from penetrating into your area, uh, radio waves are energy too, so you're kind of blocking those out with, it's like, uh, you know, babe with the bathwater kind of thing. So, um, you need to have the antenna outside and have it come into the radio so you can listen inside. Uh, other things that we are working on in here, uh, we want to have some ability to sleep. Uh, these are shelves right here, obviously, if you're not familiar with the shelf, that's a shelf. Um, uh, what I'm, I'm thinking about doing is doing some kind of bed caught things. Uh, right in this area, I want to build a three-tier thing. Uh, there's three of us that would be using this structure. Uh, gosh, with friends, maybe there's a, lot of, there's a lot of friends that know we have this. You know, I guess maybe they get some floor space. Uh, and that, that's, that's a whole other issue uh, is, you know, you know, the people that didn't prepare as much as you did. Uh, I don't have any advice on that, and you know, we all have to have our own compass on that, but I'm planning for three, possibly more, uh, and I'm planning on making some beds. Now again, I, I don't want to put a lot of effort into things that I can't get some other kind of benefit out of. Now, I, you know, granted, having the, the water sanitation, that's, like, that's just for people living in here, but what I want to do is build the shelves, uh, the bed shelves, so they could be used as food shelves. So uh, I'm going to be making them for a regular kind of rollout camping cot, uh, and uh, you know, just with the idea in mind that when people aren't sleeping on them, I can actually use them for vegetables and things like that for all the years, hopefully, that we are not uh, undergoing a nuclear Armageddon situation. So some place to sleep, uh, which brings uh, you the other things, the other things like, you know, bedding, blankets, pillows, you know, if you don't want to keep those in your space, you know, have those things maybe in plastic tubs, maybe label them, put like a little radiation symbol if you want to be all like clever about it, have them in your house somewhere and have kind of a stack of things that you need to grab to move into your space if you need to use your space. That's what we're planning on doing. So we're going to be doing that, uh, building a bed rack there. Uh, we talked about the air intake and the fan and everything. Um, uh, also, food. Now, there's a lot of food in here, but I, you know, I, I, I don't want to think about the, what people would be feeling uh, in terms of their digestive systems if all we ate for two weeks was pineapple chunks and, like, onions. <laughs> so, we need to get some variety of food in here. And um, that's another thing that you could, you know, kind of put aside in bins. And you would want to be kind of uh, specific about how much you bring in because, you know, uh, any most people's uh, fallout shelter location. I think this is a, a pretty big one. I think most people would be in a situation where they have something even smaller, and you don't want to be having more stuff than you need. And again, it comes back to the idea of two weeks. You know, this isn't the you know you don't have to live there for the rest of your life. Think about that is two weeks, fifteen days, about. So if you kind of like figure out how much food you need for your people for fifteen days, maybe throw in a little extra in there for like I don't know anxiety eating or whatever. Um, you know, try to get, try to figure out whatever food you might need and then have some bins that are just kind of ready to go for that. And that goes for what happens to the food afterwards. I said that we get back to the number two thing. Uh, there's lots of different ways of kind of addressing that. Now, when I built this place, I could have put in like a whole plumbing thing. You know, I, it would have to be covert because I wouldn't want to run it to the actual septic system or whatever, you know, because you're never going to use it, hopefully. Um, I didn't end up doing that. Uh, you know, back when I was building it, it was kind of like, eh, you know, Maybe there'll be a need to use it as a fallout shelter, but I don't want to go crazy about it. At this point, maybe I wish I put a few more plumbing pastures, but we're not going to do actual plumbing, uh, you know, from our standpoint on that. And it comes down to that, like, you know, 15-day kind of thing. We got three people, 15 days. Uh, you know, if each person does, like, one poop a day, that's 45 poops. Um, that, that's not an enormous amount of space. You know, I, I, I can deal with that. I can deal with 45 poops. So what our plan, in, uh, plan is for that is, uh, I've got this. It's a camping toilet seat that just sits on top of, well, one of these. Five gallon bucket. So what we're gonna be doing, uh, I've already ordered some bags that go into a five gallon bucket. This goes on top. And the idea being, uh, you know, someone would poop into that and you kind of close up the bag, you know, you want, you want to make sure you have twist ties in here and, uh, you know, once the bag gets, you know, 
like that's enough we don't want to put any more in there kind of tie the thing up uh, and and then what I plan on uh, having is another bucket for the bags after they get filled up and you can kind of like put those bags in another bag um, and have plenty of bags so if one bag gets a hole or something like that's not a whole thing you, you got a plan for that. Uh, that, 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 that that's my plan is uh, you know 45 poops you know one per day for three people for about 15 days uh, you know I can deal with that and I can just you know get get rid of it later so that's what I'm, I'm planning to do for that is uh, one of those uh, camping toilet seats a couple of buckets and some bags and that is my my plan to deal with that um, additional things um, when people are in here, you want to have something to do. I mean, there's going to be a lot of anxiety. There's going to be, honestly, probably a lot of boredom uh, also. So things like books, papers, pencils, crayons. You know, I've got a boy. You know, I was thinking about maybe buying, uh, my boy likes Legos, maybe get like a Lego set that, uh, you know, is would be new. Like, a, it's, it's Christmas, you know, so we'll go down to the, the fallout shelter. It's Christmas time. Uh, that would at least make the first day a little bit more interesting. So may, maybe, you know, think about like that, like something new or fresh if you have, uh, uh, you have children. So it's kind of like, it's like a silver lining, you know, there may be a nuclear holocaust, but at least you got a new Lego set out of it. Um, so, um, other things, um, laptop computers, they could play movies. Uh, I like to keep movies on a hard drive, uh, specifically actually for this event. I've always taken uh, films and ripped them to uh, hard drives. It's just, it's easier to watch them than pop, popping in a disc. Um, but also it makes it so that like, you got a ton of movies and a little space. And I'm, I'm planning on having that so we, you know, we can have movie night like all day long. Uh, and, Again, the computers could also be used for accessing the internet if the internet is up, um, or you know, just all the other th entertaining things you can do with computers. Uh, you know, creating things, drawing, writing, writing a journal. All right, um, or editing. Uh, I will, if it ever happens, I will do my best to continue broadcasting from this space if uh, if we can possibly upload material. Okay, uh, what if? What if you forget something? Um, and, and I have some other things I'm going to talk about too. This list is in no particular order. This is like literally the list that I've been working on for the past couple days. What if you forget something though? What if, what if you have to go outside? Well, you should have a plan for that. I mean, ideally you don't have to do that. And if there's any way around going outside, especially during those first couple of days, don't go outside. It's, it's not worth it unless it's absolutely worth it. If it's something Critical, I mean, if everyone's gonna suffocate or something, you know, you forgot something incredibly important, or who the hell knows what it is, you gotta have a plan to go outside if you're gonna go outside. So, have a plan. So what do you do about that? Well, uh, one thing that I've done is, uh, I, I bought, actually a while ago, I, maybe, they may be more expensive now, a while ago I bought, you know the stuff that you wear when you're at the dentist to protect you from the radiation, like the, the you know, the lead-lined clothing? I bought a bunch of that, so, uh, even back then, it was like a couple hundred bucks investment to get that. But they, there's like um, they've got like hats and they've got you know uh, coverall vests and things. I actually just went with like a uh, a shroud. It's like an apron to go over the head because like the caps. I'm like, well, it doesn't it, it doesn't protect any of this stuff in here. So I, I got one that can kind of like uh, go down over your head almost like a hood, and you can bring it down to like a tube. So the only place that the uh, radiation is coming in is like right in your face, right there. Um, so, you know, have some way of kind of uh, protecting yourself. Another way you can do that uh, is just f uh, with uh, sheets of lead. You can buy sheets of lead. Uh, I, I, I just recently, a couple weeks ago, I'm still waiting for it in the mail. Um, I got a sheet of lead that's like a foot wide by uh, four feet long. Yeah, it's a foot wide by four feet long. It's a six, one sixteenth of an inch thick and uh, lead like that you can kind of use it like a foil uh, so my plan with that is to kind of have that is just a like for whatever kind of thing like if I need to go outside I could literally make like a like a, a helmet out of it or like if there's a, like a patch or, something, or put it around your crotch or whatever um, you know that would be a useful thing to uh, be able to use if you're gonna have something like that you're also gonna want to have uh, metal shears to clip it uh, in, in addition to that any kind of tools that you might need, screwdrivers, wrenches, hammers, you know, absolutely anything. Even, you know, something like, you know, let's say you've put yourself in some kind of structure, maybe you build it in your backyard and it has like one way in, one way out. What if that way gets kind of blocked by something? You know, what if a tree falls down on your door? You don't want to have some way of busting out of your door. What I have in here is a small hatchet. Uh, I've, I've always had the idea that like, if I was ever in here, the door got closed on me, I'd want to have some way of chopping my way out. So, you know, have some kind of a tool. But 
getting back to if you, you yourself need to go out, you know, you need to have uh, you know protective equipment. And so, you know, cover yourself up the best you can. Is it going to be perfect? No, it absolutely is not going to be. Should you hurry? Yeah, you absolutely should hurry. But you know, do the best you can. The other thing we talked about, you don't want to be inhaling this stuff in. You need a full face respirator. Uh, it, you know, there are different cartridges. There's the CBRN, I think they're called, the ones that uh, can screw in, that protect you specifically from a lot of nuclear stuff. If you don't have that, you know, you use the best you can. The more, the more you can filter stuff, the better. Now, I, I remember at the beginning of COVID, uh, you know, people were, there was all, all this like mask envy, like back when the CDC said nobody should wear, well, at first it was like everyone should wear masks and then everyone shouldn't wear masks and then, you know, it was crazy and everything and it was driving it was making people crazy and you know people were getting all like uh, oh your mask isn't gonna work because it's like you know it's this that and the other thing or or, or the end I remember right at the beginning when I was wearing N95 masks people were telling me you can only wear those for four hours and then you have to throw them out or they're useless um, you know does a ma uh, does an N95 mask become useless as good as absolutely nothing at all after four hours absolutely not so you know you do the best you can and at this point you can order stuff you can get a full face respirator if you can't get a full face respirator get yourself some glasses get yourself uh, you know well, some goggles and you know like a, a real right you know you do the best you can you know think about it now like, think about yourself needing to go out in that environment what are the things that you would wish that you had and you know secure them now because when you're stuck in a hole your, your options are going to be a lot more limited one cool option that I just came across uh, is in, in terms of a, uh, a coverall. Uh, this here is a coverall. I've been buying a bunch of these. Um, I, I know uh, Nate, a Canadian prepper, he does a lot of videos on, on this kind of thing. He's been doing things with Mira Safety. It's a really cool company. It's a lot of really great safety gear. Um, they, they have these like full body kind of shrouds. It's like a coverall. Um, and that's really cool. Uh, it's also really expensive. And to some degree, it's only fully useful if um, you have a decontamination area because uh, you put all this equipment on and you go out into that environment as soon as you come back the entire surface of whatever you're wearing is going to be contaminated and that would be a danger to bring it in so you really want to cover yourself up and either be able to clean off that surface if you have like a whole shower room uh, in your fallout shelter, that's great. Uh, most of us, myself included, don't have that. So what I'm planning on doing is if I need to go out, and God forbid I do not want to go out, but if I need to go out, I want to take all those things, those, the, you know, the lead lining and the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the dentist gear and you know, all the other stuff and completely cover it up with a coverall so that when I come back, I, all I have to do is take that coverall off and just leave it outside. Uh, and the, I keep throwing this back down, but I keep wanting to pick it back up. Uh, some of the ones that Mira Safety sells, you know, if you want to buy a bunch of those, yeah, you can do it that way, uh, but they're super expensive. This coverall here is $2.70. I'm going to put a link specifically for this. I'm going to put a link to a bunch of things down in the description below, for, you know, things that I, I, I think are useful. But this specifically, this is an awesome uh, deal. I, I pulled one, uh, one of these out. I tried it on. I, I tried to, like, blow through the plastic to make sure it wasn't just a mesh. You could just kind of, like, blow through. It's... A uh, impermeable, uh, impermeable surface. Uh, it's like a continuous circuit, a surface of plastic. Uh, now, are you going to want to like have this and be walking through brush and everything? No, it's going to get torn to shreds. But if you just need to go outside, do something quickly, and then come back in, this is going to be totally fine. Two dollars and seventy cents. You can buy a bunch of them. You can get ten of them for thirty bucks, and that means you get ten trips out. Uh, and you know, again, you, you know, leave all that stuff outside. So I think that would be an excellent way of kind of protecting all of that other gear underneath and protecting yourself. Let's see, what else do we have here? I mentioned the idea I want to get a toolbox in here for any of the things that you know, might break or I need to, need to address. Uh, I've got a heater on my list here, which we already talked about. Uh, also, let's say the power goes out and I don't have lights in here anymore. I want to have some way of uh, you know, still having you know, some kind of light because you need light to kind of fix other problems. So some kind of crank lanterns, crank flashlights, or, you know, even just battery powered stuff, but some kind of a backup. So, so we've got grid power. If that fails, we've got solar power. If that fails, we've got the other solar power. If that fails, we've got the crank lamps. Because when you're stuck in a box, you're not going to be able to run out anywhere. You want to have the stuff ahead of time. We're also going to be throwing vitamins in here, you know, with the food. Make sure we have vitamins. Uh, I mentioned the toilet bucket, which is on my list, the bags. Uh, now, if you're going to set up a toilet in the corner somewhere, uh, you know, this isn't like, you know, it's not hardcore prepping gear, but how about like a privacy curtain? 
like just a shower curtain or some sheets or something like that so you can you can set off a corner so that you know if you have people that feel like they don't want to be stared at while they're, they're you know pooping or whatever uh, I, I think that that would be a very valuable item having some kind of a, a privacy curtain or even just some cardboard or anything like that uh, additionally I mentioned uh, we're gonna have the beds here you know in this space I can stand up uh, a lot of fallout shelters, like kind of the rudimentary ones that you read about in different books. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to put a link to an awesome book you can get for free down below. It's an excellent book. It was written by someone that just wanted to give it to the world. I forget the title and the author right now. I've done other videos on it. But check that book out. You can download it for free. It's got a lot of great things, including how to build your own uh, you know, primitive fallout shelter. Uh, and one of the issues with some of those uh, you know, ones that you do, like, you know, a couple days before is that you know this here is like well what am I I'm like six feet and it's like you know seven at least seven feet to the ceiling a lot of those are not like that they're kind of like hunched down places it's like you know I'm only here because I don't want to die of radiation poison outside it's horrible to me in here because I you know I can't even, I literally can't even stand up this place you can stand up but still uh, you know you get your positions are standing up walking around a little bit you want to be able to you know get a little bit of stretching in We'll be able to lie down on the beds, but also sitting. Sitting is a really nice position to be in. You know, I think we're used to that. So why not throw some folding chairs in? If you have enough space to have a folding chair, people can sit down. It'll make people a lot more comfortable. Um, for our place, I've got a note to myself. I want to make sure I have hardware for securing the door so that the door to this place can be uh, held down tightly so that, um, you know, there's not, you know, if it's windy, we don't have like wind blowing dust up under the door. And, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about, uh, just briefly, is, uh, is water again. I mentioned that uh, we have water coming in from the house, but I also have these, these five gallon jugs, and I plan on filling these up with water uh, as, uh, as actually a barrier uh, for blocking uh, one of our weak points in this structure. It's just a door. It's just a wooden door with some foam insulation on the back side. Uh, and I want to use these to kind of line in front of the door. And that, uh, this is like, it's a good foot of water. And I'm going to put two layers of these, so it'll be two feet of water in front of the door. Uh, and uh, what I'll be doing is kind of staggering the uh, layers of them so that you don't have two joints right in front of each other and the particles can't go right through. Additionally, in this space, I did what's called geometric shielding, uh, which is that the entrance into the place doesn't point directly in. The entrance here is just to your left over in that direction. You come in from over there, walk to behind where you are, and then step in. And there's a wall, which I'll just pan to right here, right now. And there's a wall right here. This is a 10 inch thick wall, and you can see the entrance right over there. So you come in, you go around that wall, and, uh, and then that brings you into the space. So any of the particles that are coming in from that door are uh, going Diagonally, you know, diagonally, like uh, right behind you, and this wall is kind of protecting uh, the space. But I also want to just minimize that as much as I can by making a wall of water. And worse comes to worse, the water in these guys, as long as a radioactive dust does not get into the water, the water should be fine, even with the uh, the energy particles going through it. Uh, the water should be fine. Now I know. You know, there's people that will say don't even microwave water because if you microwave water, it's going to you know, make you grow an extra tail. And maybe that <laughs> extra tail, how many tails do we have? Actually, you know, humans have one tail. Um, you know, there may be some truth to that, but my primary plan is to use that water. I'm going to have some of these jugs away from that area as backups. But, you know, it's, it's that kind of situation where, you know, if things start falling apart, things fail, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to die of thirst because you don't want to, you know, expose yourself potentially to something. So it's a good idea to, um, you just give yourself lots of options. And the other thing that I think is really important to do is to, to kind of practice. I've oftentimes said, you know, in terms of people uh, wanting to bug out, uh, that the best way that you can get practice for bugging out, uh, you know, if your idea is to leave the city and just kind of go off into the wilderness, the best thing you can do is just go, go out and go camping. Because uh, camping is really good at um, you know, offering you a good time, but it's also really good at reminding you or um, directing your attention to the things that are really important in your life. You go camping and you forget something like toilet paper, you're going to figure that out right away. In fact, that's something I didn't put on my list, was it? Um, yeah, yeah, toilet paper might be another good thing to have in here. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is doing a dry run with my boy. We're, you know, we're calling it like... Um, 
like mission to Mars, where we're going to another planet and like trying to be in our, our space station. Because it's kind of the same thing. You want to be self-contained and you'll be within that environment. <laughs> we're not gonna, we ain't going to do it for any two weeks. But our plan is that uh, probably like we'll have dinner one evening and then come out and uh, you know get everything ready out here and we'll kind of camp out overnight. Then have breakfast the next morning and then like, you know, you know before lunch the next day we'll pop out because that will give us a chance to uh, you know kind of test through all the motions you know you know sitting down laying down having a little bit of downtime you know uh, you know needing to pee needing to poop you know do it, all these things that we kind of like give you the opportunity to go through them because when you practice things uh, you know you realize really quickly what are the things you're missing and this is the time depending on when this is uh, you know when you watch this video at least at the time of this recording this is the time that you want to realize all those things you're missing because right now it's a lot easier to take care of them than if you actually are stuck in here and you can't leave. So that would be my advice to you is uh, download that book below. It'll give you some basic ideas about how to create your own shelter. And then, you know, start thinking about how you want to, how you want to, if you want to use that term, uh, exist in that space for up to two weeks. And, uh, and I would highly recommend doing some kind of a test. Okay, let's say you don't want to actually build a structure. Building a structure, if you don't have one pre-existing, is kind of a pain in the ass. Let's say you don't want to do that. You know, live out of your bathroom, you know, for that evening. You know, it's like you have dinner and then it just, we're, we're going to be in the bathroom, you know, for, for the evening and see how it goes. Now, you know, don't compel anyone to do it. You know, just it's enough to try yourself and any, any of your family members that are enthusiastic about it, you know, that'll be enough to kind of like find out where the, the issues and errors are. It's a whole other thing uh, in terms of like men and women. Uh, you know, there are women in our group. And, you know, what if it's that time of the month? You want to make sure you remember those kind of things as well because you know if you're doing a dry run and you know that doesn't have to happen to be an issue at that time what if that happens to be an issue during the events you're going to want to think of all those kind of things but you know the periodic thing <laughs> pun not actually intended there the periodic things that, like you don't necessarily do every day but might come up during it you you want to think about all those things so super long video here i hope it was helpful and honest to god i hope none of us ever have actually do this kind of stuff because you know an event like this would just be so awful on so many levels and even if you survive it completely unscathed the world into which we would all emerge would just be such a lesser world than it is right now the world right now has all sorts of problems and you know it's, it, it's so far from ideal but the kind of world that a conflict like that, like that an event like that would create, what would manifest out of that would be so much worse than what we have now on so many levels. I mean, societal levels, environmental levels, you know, you talk about pollution now, you know, to walk out into a world where the whole thing, to some degree, it's, it's safe, it's not going to kill you right away, but uh, it's, it's, this is something I really do not want to see happen, but if it does happen, as a prepper, you make the best of it and you do the best you can with it. So that's it. Hope this has been a helpful video. Tonight, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, this next ex the next episode of the Alien Invasion series is uh, going to be released. And, uh, and that's it. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.